You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Episode 2 of the option block. A lot of twos on the docket this week. It is part of our double pro week out there. So you folks out there, especially all you secret club folks have been just overwhelmed, deluged even with content. You had your usual option block on Monday and crypto rundown, double dose of pro Q and A's on Tuesday. We had Mr. Greg Magadini from of course, uh, Genesis volatility talking all things crypto and the return of the one, the only Viceroy as well on Tuesday. He knew, he knew once we heard we were talking about, selling and trading options on cheap stocks. It was like putting up the bat signal to uh, the viceroy. He had to return. So he was back in the pro Q&A hot seat on Tuesday. Yesterday, you had four episodes coming at you. Double dose of options, boot camp, and a double dose of OPR, including a live huddle, which you cool cats in the secret club already heard. Everybody else has to hear a week from now. So a lot of great stuff all rolling into episode two now of your bi-weekly options extravaganza. The option block. Where do you go to partake in all this awesome goodness? Well, of course, the best place to go, theoptionsinsider.com. All sorts of great stuff there. Show links, of course, articles, most actives, all this earnings vol stuff, which again is popping off. So we got a lot of new reports coming at you over there. All that's for free. If you want to go above and beyond, you want to join those live pro Q&As. You want to join us on Friday on Options Oddities. You want to be part of the drawing pool for the giveaways and all kinds of other fun stuff the options insider.com slash secret club <laughs> remember it's a secret and let's see who's joining us today to discuss all the secrets in the world of options first let's go out to the quiet the sleepy the tranquil hamlet no as saint charles where we are joined by the ninja of wealth management himself none other and Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management. Oh, as the cool kids call him, Stone Cold Uncle Mike. Stone Cold Uncle Mike. Welcome Uh-oh. back to the program, sir. <laughs> I don't know if I want to claim that title because the last thing that I need is to get Stone Cold Steve Austin mad at me for claiming that title. So I think I'm going to pass on that title for fear of him just appearing out of nowhere and giving me a stunner. You stand in somewhere, all of a sudden you hear that glass breaking. And that music pops up and you know you're in trouble. <laughs> Good stuff. A little bit of a throwback to our Monday post-WrestleMania episode. Catch it if you haven't done so already. Listen, let's go out now. He's already saying, what the hell are they talking about? He is the rockingest of lobsters, a.k.a. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com, a.k.a. the guy who apparently missed all of the 80s when it came to wrestling and sounds from Stone Cold perspective, a bit of the 90s as well. Mr. Rock Lobster, welcome back to the show. I would ask you how you enjoyed WrestleMania, but I think I know the answer. I, um, I, again, I still, um, I don't know what happened to me in the 80s. I guess in the 80s, I was in high school and college, and watching wrestling on TV, just that 
just didn't appeal. It didn't appeal to me. I don't know, man. Back in those days, it didn't get much cooler than like Hogan and Warrior. I got to say, they were like the MJ of their day and that kind of thing. You know, they were they were pretty big across the board. Didn't matter age group. Obviously, kids like Uncle Mike and I, and then uh, distinguished hard drinking adults like yourself of the '80s uh, also liked pro wrestling back then. So it was good stuff. Abounds. You know what else abounds in goodness? It's the trading block. So let's get to it. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Let's do it. Let us commence the dance of joy that is the option block (laughs) with, of course, The Trading Block, the segment where we break down all the action going on on today's screens. And today's screens are a little bit reflective, a little bit reminiscent of what we've been seeing for a lot of the most recent sessions, which is a fair amount of red on the screen, even if we are seeing a little bit less red on the screens right now. It seems like the S&P sold off to about 44.50, and then it bounced off that level. We're still down a little over a third of a point, but back in about 44.60s range, 64 or so right now. So the S&P, maybe for the, for the time being at least, seems to have found its low for the day. NASDAQ was off well over 1%, now off about 0.95%, so a little bit shy of a let's see how low did how low did it go in the nasdaq let's see if i can get my data to cooperate with me there we go so nasdaq got down to about a 13690 we're at a 13756 that's quite a rebound there right before showtime there dow off a little over a third of a percent as well so still down but not quite as down as we were earlier in the session and certainly not as aggressive as some of the sell-offs we've seen in recent sessions all that translating though all this red on the screen for the last few sessions means our vol is going to be higher than it was this time on Monday's show. When we kicked off the show, VIX was just shy of the 24 handle, about 23.75. That puts it up about four and a half handles from where it was on Monday's show. So a decent little pop there. VIX at about 117, up about nine points from where it was this time last week. A VXX, who knows what the hell this thing's doing anymore. <laughs> Back up again to about points, up about... A little over a half a point, about 0.6. That puts it at about a 24.85 or so when we kicked off the show. Uh, UVXY, we were just talking about how it was threatening that uh, that 10 handle, now up to about a 14, little 14.10 actually, a little over two points from Monday's show to the upside. And Vol Q, the NASDAQ Vol, was at about a 27, up a firm five points from where it was on Monday's show. I'm going to start adding into the rotation these new uh, SVIXs and everything else pretty soon. Today. I got a feeling we'll be getting into all that fun in a little bit on ball views tomorrow, maybe even later today. We shall see. Uh, let's go around the horn. Let's go the way we came. Let's start with the Uncle and Mike. Mr. Uncle Mike, you must have been kind of bored because these last few sessions, not really Uncle Mike types of days, so you were probably just out fishing and riding in the boat, right? Not much to do. No, nothing at all. Just not, All I do is fish all day. No, not really. Now, in looking at this, um, we are starting to level off a little bit with the 10-year note sell-off. It seems the big talk right now in the Bond world is the uh, potential inverted yield curve, and that seems to scare the bejeebers out of everybody if we do have an inverted yield curve. But we are flirting with the 10 and the 30. Uh, It has gone, uh, we actually are flirting it also with the 2 and the 10. So I'm not looking at it right now, but it might even be over it right now. Who knows? But um, there is always a concern of that uh, for a market correction when something like that happens. Um, Right now, I'm still because the market's negative on the year, essentially the main exposure that I have in my aggressive strategy is I have a very, very out of the money put spread. It started off as a somewhat meaty, but it's a little bit, it's kind of become teeny. Uh, so I'm not complaining too much about it. Uh, I wouldn't call it teeny because teeny implies that um, there's no, not much reward left on it, but there is still some reward left in it. So I'm holding on to it for the time being. Um, and looking at this, uh, silver is staying roughly the same. We have not had a big move in silver these last couple days. And then just the other things with which I'm looking at as we're going through this, uh, I'm continuing to watch XLE. Uh, XLE with where it's at right now, uh, we're still in the mid-70s in XLE. Uh, it's the energy sector ETF. So in looking at that, uh, we have not really had a major bid on that but on the flip side or in the last week or so uh by comparison to how fast it ran up when the whole ukraine thing started uh but by comparison in fairness to that we did have oil at 130 at one point and now oil's back at 95 
So that's definitely something that um, watching and watching fairly closely. Uh, news of this week, it sounded to me like the Fed was saying that uh, they are still going to go through uh, with what they had initially planned with rate increases. Uh, the concern with which I have about, or the, the thought that I have about the rate increases that they're talking about, they're playing the game right now and that they're wanting to say, uh, okay, we're going to increase rates and then seeing what the market does when they say it and then whether or not they follow through on it. I, I think it's based upon how market reactions are to it. I mean, I, I know they technically say that they don't really are, they're not really reactive to the stock market or how the bonds are selling off or this, that, and the other, but, but I think they are. Uh, that's just, maybe that's the tinfoil hat in me, who knows, but I think they are. Uh, and so the other thing with which to consider right now, with the 10-year note paying in the mid twos at this point in time, that means that when the United States sells treasury bonds, that means that they have to pay r roughly three to four times what they were paying a few months ago because the interest rate's higher. And I don't know if we can afford to do that. So the thought of raising rates more putting more of a burden on our government to pay higher interest rates. I just, I don't know if we're going to get all the rate increases that people are saying that we're going to. So that's just kind of how I'm looking at it right now. Do I think we're going to get some rate increases this year? Yeah, I think we will. But I really also believe that the Fed is sitting there hoping and hoping that uh, with supply chains getting better and things becoming more normal, that it can kind of halt inflation somewhat, kind of, sort of, hopefully. And if that's the case, then I think they're going to say, ah, now that inflation is down, supply chain issues are taken care of, now we don't have to raise rates and be the bad guys anymore. So that's my theory and my hope as to what's happening, uh, But we'll, or the Fed's hope as to what's happening or what I think they're hoping for. And that's uh, what I'm looking at today in the markets. It does seem like they are not inclined to want to be the bad guys, hence their uh, continued easing for the better part of the last year and change. You could probably argue maybe it wasn't necessary, but uh, that's a conversation for another day. We can go down a deep Fed rabbit hole if you like, but tend not to do that too often here on the network because you can always kick the Fed. It's pretty easy at the end of the day. Instead, let's go out to the land of the shores of Maine where he's always kicking something. Maybe it's the cat. Maybe it's the local clam pirates. Maybe it's the Fed. Mr. Rock Lobster, what are you kicking today, sir? <laughs> I never, I never thought you'd, the cat you'd come up with the cat, but I, that's pretty funny. That's actually that's funny stuff. I have my I'm moments. Give me that one. Literally going to kick your cat while ten thousand people are, are listening to you. Is that what you're looking <laughs> to do right now, Andrew? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't have a cat. All of you cat lovers out there, Andrew's probably kicking his cat right now as we speak. <laughs> I'll tell you who's kicking that. Kicking the can, kicking the can down the, the hill, the Fed. Uh, the Fed is just ridiculous. Um, and yeah, they need to raise rates so those knuckleheads stop spending all our money. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, interest rates are going up and you, your interest, but like, the, the madness, and why, like, I don't even know where those guys exist. Do they, do they look in the mirror? <laughs> so... Um, so I, all I would say is madness exists at the old government level. Just crazy. I don't know. So uh, I, there's not much else to say about that. Uh, one day they're going to have to pay the piper, um, and we'll see. Um, but the as far as uh, you know, what's going on with everything else? Um, very, very interesting, right? Um, we have a uh, uh, basic. What I'm like, so I looked at VIX and like how everything's kind of trading, and I'm watching. Uh, I've got this cool little appliance, this Edge Hunter appliance that lets me follow basically the SPX skew in real time. It's kind of cool. Um, and uh, and as of right now, as of right now, vol has like we had a little bit of pop in vol, and it's come all the way back down to um, to uh, where it started. Um, today so i think we're trying to sell off but i think really there's just i think it's the lack of get up and go in the market right so uh with rates going up um all all that stimmy money is gone all that all of these 
basically all of this made up crap <laughs> that got stocks to such levels last year is gone. And you're going to be old fashioned. Okay. Well, companies make money and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, but also vol comes down when the upside is out. So I, when I'm looking at, uh, you know, pricing VIX and all that stuff and, you know, it's those one, two, three percent up moves that were kind of really keep involved, kind of buoyant, you know, six percent bounce off the bottom and all that kind of crap. Um, so we don't we don't have that right now. Like, uh, you know, I think Mark, uh, Mike's strategy of just selling some downside put spreads, it's like there's not a lot of up in the market because what's you know, what's the impetus? You know, and I think we would get a, a, a relief rally when the Russians, if the Russians ever pull out of. A Ukraine, but it doesn't seem that they're ever really going to leave at this point. You know, um, it's just going to kind of drag on, and they're going to claim some territory, and it'll be some kind of you know weird fugue state, like the guy from Breaking Bad, you know, wandering down the road. Um, like Putin's going to be wandering around in Ukraine. Oh, I guess I can't ever leave. I'm stuck here. So it's sad, but it just it's what it appears to be, um, especially because. The EU keeps buying oil and gas from them. <laughs> so, like, so it could go on indefinitely. I mean, they're not really, they're serious, but they're not serious. Um, anyway, but uh, so from a vol point of view and market point of view, just where's, you know, that all that, you know, giddy up and go money is not around. Uh, people are going back to work. Um, firms are, so there is the, Basically, just getting the country back to where it was before they decided to stop everything uh, two years ago. And then we're just kind of back to where we were two years ago now. Should stocks be, you know, 40 percent higher than they were of Jan in 2020? I think that's kind of where the number is here. I think, what were we, 3,500 there? Um, a lot of that gain is only in, you know, a few names, to be honest. Uh, yeah, we started... Where do we start here? We started January 2020 at, uh, we started at 3,400 and we traded down to 4,200. I kind of liked 4,000 actually. And then we had this little bounce back up. So again, not quite sure what the bounce back up was. I guess the worst of the global panic, shortage panic didn't really pan out. Um, so again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not being grumpy. But there, you know, the the upside vol is just hard to make that case. It doesn't mean the market can't go up or stocks can't go up. But, you know, the government is being pressed. They are going to have to spend less money. They got no choice. Interest rates are going up. And that usually leads to, um, you know, like a lower volatility market. And, you know, it just, it just means that uh, it doesn't mean we're going to crash. It just means that all that giddy up and go is gone. And that's kind of what it appears right now. So I have to say, Mr. Tucson, he's been managing money for a little while. And when he's not looking, seeing a lot of giddy up and go, there's probably not a lot of giddy up and go. So I'll, I'll give my, I'll give some credit to that man in uh, St. Charles, Illinois. Stone cold uncle Mike says the rock lobster. When he's not busy kicking his cat. Yeah. He doesn't have a cat. He says, yeah. And I wonder why. Cause he kicked it. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's gone. No more cat. PETA folks, hit up the Rock Lobster over there, Andrew at OptionPit.com. Don't send your hate mail to me. I had nothing to do with it. It's all over there, OptionPit.com. Let's keep on rolling here, see what's going on in the major markets out there from an options perspective. Let's kick it off in VIX land. And this is typically not, I mean, not a day where you see a huge amount of paper. We see some. I mean, obviously, usually red on the major index green is usually better for VIX volume than, of course, green. And we're seeing a little bit of that reflected today, but we're not blowing the doors off in any regard. About 180,000 contracts on the tape. In VIX land right now, the ADV has eroded back down to about 555. So we're kind of hanging out, kind of waiting for that next shoe to drop. Will it be lower in VIX land? Will it be higher? What will it be that will move that ADV substantially again? Spy, similar deal, not even at half of a day's worth of volume right now, about 2.62 million contracts on the tape. In Spy land, that ADB, about exactly 6 million now. It has ticked down, about 6.02 million right now. It's not even half a day's worth of paper, even less in the S. Only 630,000 contracts up 
in the S right now. That's a pretty light day, all things considered. And the ADB about 1.66 million out there. And small caps, at least through the IWM lens, 419,000 contracts. That ADB, exactly 700K out there right now. So a little bit more paper out there in IWM land right now. If you want more small caps, uh, small caps, by the way, off about a percent right now. If you want more small caps in your life, stay tuned for Twifo coming up in a little bit over an hour. We'll be joined by Todd Colvin, break down all this stuff. Uncle Mike's talking about rates. I got a feeling we'll talk about rates there as well as a whole bunch of other fun stuff, small caps. Probably some energy going to make it on the show. Spoiler. I haven't looked at the Movers and Shakers report yet, but I can probably guess energy is going to be there somewhere. So stay tuned for Twifo, a little over an hour for you live folks in the Secret Club. For you after the fact listeners, just hit next on your device of choice. Let's keep on rolling out to, let's see, let's go to our top 10 most actives now. And it's kind of a middling day from that perspective as well. 215,000 contracts on the tape. It's not nothing. It's also not 350 or anything like that. So it's kind of right in the middle there. Usually I consider 150 or so to be kind of the low end and north of 300K to be pretty aggressive. So we're kind of smack dab in the middle. That gets us to Neo. Neo, barely in the top 10 today. That's an interesting day. 215,000 contracts for them. Number nine, it's Facebook. The on again, off again, on again, love affair. That is Facebook, 226,000 contracts. Facebook off about a percent today, hanging out right around 221 out there. Still has rebounded nicely from its March 14th low of 186. I don't think that was quite half, but it was pretty darn close. Was it half? Yeah, they got up to about, looks like about three, oh, 384 was the high for the year. So yeah, 186. <laughs> pretty much down to about half. So yeah, that's, 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 uh, a pretty aggressive sell-off in the land of the old fb a number eight got sofi creeping back into the top 10 today sofi hanging out right now at seven dollars and 89 cents off nearly 10 percent. so uh, things apparently not good in the land of online personal finance maybe i'll have to give up some of those naming rights on those pricey stadiums either way good for 299,000 contracts out there that's of course on the weight of of Biden extending that student loan moratorium. Doesn't look good for firms like SoFi. But again, good for the options front, 299,000 contracts. Number number seven, it's our old friend Ford. Back to a 14 handle. Haven't seen that in some time. Let's, let's see, how low did it get on the March 14th Nader out there? We're actually below that. It only got down to 1574, so we're exactly a point below. The March 14th sell. That's usually that's usually the near term low for a lot of stocks right now. And Ford hit 1574. It's at 1474 right now. Wow, that's uh that's impressive. So some of that meme bloom coming off the Ford Rose. So if you were lamenting it when it was in the 20s, saying, Man, I missed the Ford pop. Maybe, uh, maybe this is your chance to dance back here again. Uh, let's see. Maybe we'll talk about it again on oddities coming up in a little bit here <laughs> later on in the week but yeah back in a 14 handle I haven't seen that let's look back really quick when's the last time we saw a 14 handle in four? it was October 7th of last year so that was before obviously this whole meme palooza really kicked off and Ford. remember not too long ago people were buying the 25 30 verticals out there 30s for size we were talking about it on shows like oddities I hit a high of 2587 at the beginning of this year that was January looks like about 14th and that was kind of it for Ford so yeah it looks like if you look now that entire meme fueled run of the last six months has pretty much been wiped away so intriguing stuff out there in Fordland good for number seven 366,000 contracts number six and five the old symbol twins back together again you can't keep them apart for long number six is AMC listeners 408,000 contracts how is our favorite Movie theater slash gold miner doing that still still makes me laugh when I say it out loud. It's off about a buck, nineteen forty or so, a little over, almost five percent on the day. And uh, let's see, that's good for four hundred and eight thousand contracts. Not to be outdone, it's symbol twin AMD says hello, brother. They're at number five with almost the exact same amount of paper, four hundred and ten thousand contracts. Are you telling me there's not some symbol confusion going on there? I riddle me that, listeners. 410 for AMD off about 1% today, right around 102 and two thirds there. Number four, it's NVIDIA hanging out at its usual spot, pretty much 
514 for NVIDIA. So jumping up quite a bit from 410 to 514. Number three, still feeling that post-Musk buzz. It's Twitter. 627,000 contracts on the tape right now. Off about 3%, or excuse me, 6%, about 3 bucks on the day. Let's see how high did it get in its pop madness. It got up to 53.84, looks like. On the year, it got as high as... 73. It's telling me the 52 week high is 73. Uh, give me the year. There we go. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so that was about a year ago. That was back in April of last year where it hit 73. And of course, now we have this musk fueled rampage here selling off a bit. Have you folks been diving into Twitter, selling puts, buying puts, buying calls? It's lighting it up on Twitter. A lot of folks have to the tune of 627,000 contracts on the tape for number three. Number two, yes, I said number two, it's the fruit company doing a whole heck of a lot of nothing right now. Apple, only 682,000 contracts. I'm hard-pressed to think of the last day we saw Apple do this little paper at this time. This is almost kind of like a rounding error. Apple gets up, they have their morning coffee, and by the time they're done with that, they usually have done this much paper. So that's not a lot of paper at all for Apple. And number one, the big dog today is actually another Musk-fueled name. It's Tesla. Not uh, moving a whole lot right now. It's kind of almost unched off about a quarter of a percent. Looks like on the day it had a nice little run, though. Got up to looks like about 1076 and sold off to 1021. So a 55 point range on the day. That's not enormous for Tesla, but it's enough for almost a million contracts so far today. So folks are slinging themselves some Tesla options out there for want of much else to trade, it seems like out there today. In terms of things to keep an eye on, we've been saying for a while we're going to keep an eye on getting ready to fire up the newest edition of the earnings move season results and trades reports. Well, they are about to begin, listeners. We are on the precipice of the glory that is yet another earnings season. All the vol, all the analysis, all the trades, all brought to you completely free by our friends over there in Orat's land. So, Hot off the presses right before showtime, we got the latest edition of the earnings move, move results, season, and trades reports. You guys can check those out for yourselves over there. Theoptionsinsider.com. Had some names popping off right before the bell today and after the bell yesterday, including Constellation Brands today before the bell. They went into their announcement 231.81. They were pricing in 4%. They delivered about 6%, so a little bit extra juice in Constellation Brands. Then we've got uh, Levi's. Levi's was after the bell yesterday. If you're wondering how much jeans vol was there, let's find out together. 1941 is where they went into their announcement. They're pricing in 7.3%. They delivered 3.9%. So a wee bit of underperformance in the land of jeans vol. And then we've got uh, Conagra. So they make, uh, you know, Marie calendars and banquets. A lot of those prepared foods you see in, oh, Slim Jims as well. <laughs> there you go. Snap into a Slim Jim. They were today before the bell, 3434 is where they were trading going into their announcement. They're pricing in 4%. They delivered, get this, half a percent. Now, that's, that's kind of like the old earnings pandemic type announcements we've come to expect now, where they price in a decent amount of all, and they deliver none of it. <laughs> is that going to be par for the course again? We hope not, but we shall see. We've got some names popping off this week. This week is really where, and this coming week is really where earnings season proper tends to kick off even though if you check out uh, matt and his team's charts they are starting to track some firms they already have tracked 14 firms announcing so they are starting to feed data into the machine over there even if earnings season proper most people really consider kicks off next week you got the financials and a bunch of big names popping off next week including everyone's favorite bed bath and beyond next week the 13th before the bell 2165 is where they were trading as of this report they were pricing in 307 in the past, they've moved three bucks. So not a lot of extra juice to be found there in good old Bed Bath & Beyond. Delta Airlines, same day before the bell, 37 and a half is where they were trading. They're pricing in about a buck 85. In the past, they moved 95 cents. So pretty much 2x their previous straddle. Again, given everything going on in the world of airlines right now, probably, probably not hard to argue against a little bit more vol being merited out there. And then the same day, J.P. Morgan, uh, 131 and a half is where they were trading. Five bucks is what they're pricing in. In the past, they've moved a little over three, about 316. Also got our buddies Ally, Brian and company out there. They're popping off on the 14th 
before the bell. 42 and three quarters is where they were trading. They're pricing in 205. In the past, they've moved the buck 59. So a little bit of extra juice there. Let's go to Goldman as well, because why not? Goldman, 14th before the bell. 316 and a quarter is where they were trading. Ooh, they're pricing in $13 pretty much. Even in the past, they've moved six and a half bucks. So pretty much exactly 2x their previous straddle. So Goldman pricing in a little bit of extra juice. Exposure to Eastern Europe, perhaps. A lot of things going off. Rates, all sorts of things popping off in the Goldman neck of the woods that could be leading to that extreme addition of volatility out there. Got PNC next week. Got a whole bunch. So. Stay tuned for those. You can see these reports for yourselves, theoptionsinsider.com. Right now, the whopping 14 names that we have reporting, listeners. The season's off to a bit of a rocking start. We're at 146% right now. Will it stay there? Probably not. (laughs) Past his prologue, we will come crashing back down to earth. But for a while, we can enjoy the madness. So let's do that right now. As of right now, the average for... Most of the pandemic era has been about an 83%. So expect that 146 to come crashing back down to earth pretty soon. Keeping an eye on the earnings trades as well. No new ones yet, but we still have 75 long straddles, 60 short straddles, and 102 long calendars that we're monitoring for you. Check out the progress of those over there. Theoptionsinsider.com. Meanwhile, we got to get rolling. It is time for the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody, let us commence the dance. That is the odd block. And you know what, Mr. Rock Lobster? Going to mix things up a little bit today. Are you down for a little bit of a mix-up, sir? I, I've been known to be down. You know, we usually, we usually uh, unleash the Eye of Sauron, and we have done that today. But uh, we have a listener-requested name for the old odd block inclusion today. So let us never be, let, let never be said that we don't take listener suggestions to heart. And it's always fun when it's a newcomer to the odd block as well. So we're going to do that right now. We have a suggestion from, I like the handle here, Ron is wrong. We'll see. We'll see if you're wrong, wrong, but you're being kind of hard on yourself, I think. He says, hey, Mark, love all the shows. Here's one for the option block, maybe. Another biotech for you, BCRX, with unusual options activity yesterday. He sent this in about a week ago, so we're a wee bit behind. I apologize. We do get a lot of questions. (laughs) He says, there were 900 deep in the money calls for the April 10." And 700 May 7, excuse me, 7,000 May 17 calls. He says, the next day I saw while there was 7,000 in volume was just those first two or three minutes, around 3,700 May 17 contracts that got added to the OI. It was sizable and was done on the same day as $710 calls for April. Unusual. Anyway, kick up the great work. A lot of us on the BCRX board are big fans. Well, thank you for that. Ron is wrong. If you're not familiar with BCRX, Listeners, this is BioChrist Pharmaceuticals, Inc. This is American Pharma out of North Carolina. It looks like they, they say they do late-stage drugs, oral drugs for rare and serious diseases. Okay. <laughs> that explains very little, but okay. Let's see. BCRX. Let's look at it over the past year. Trading about 17 and a half, almost 1760. Nice little pop today. Up a buck today. So whoever was buying those 17 calls, I'm going to go out on a limb and say probably was happy. <laughs> a year ago, this thing was trading about 10 bucks, 1040. And so it's had a nice little pop. It rallied all the way up to 17 before. Guess what day, listeners? Oh, yes, June 8th. <laughs> That's when it hit 1704. Then it kind of hung out at that level for quite some time in the mid teens until November. Then it sold off again down to about 1161. Bounced around there for a while until the new year started. And it rallied again to about 16 and a half bucks in January. And then it hit its apex for the year on February 16th, 1999. So just a penny away from 20 bucks. Since then, it's been kind of mostly selling off again, back to where it is right now, $17.57. And so I took a look, Mr. Rock Lobster, at the paper he was talking. This is about a week ago or so out there. And he was right. There was some. Well, first off, before I even get to last week's paper, when I pulled this up, 
today. Someone's back on the aggressive tip again today. We saw a print of 2,418 of the April 18s going up for 25 cents, and then another about 1,000 for 40 cents, a total of 7,000. That number sounds familiar. That seems to be the magic number out here. Someone likes putting up 7,000 lots <laughs> in BCRX. And the same thing happened back on March 29th. I think this is what he was referring to. There was a Palooza in the May 17 calls. We saw a block of them, 500 going up for $2.05. That's pretty meaty for the May 17 calls. I paid $2 for these things. That's $2. That's a 71 vol, if you are intrigued, listeners. They kept going a total of about 7,000, again, going up that day. So 7,000 appears to be the magic number. He's right. The opening of the OI was only about 3,800 they added. So a little bit of back and forth on that strike there during the day. But it seems like 7,000 is the magic number. Someone, for the most part, Mr. Rock Lobster, has been loading up. He mentions the 10s as well. I didn't get a chance to find those. but So 10s deep in the money, and then 17s. And uh, now have since uh, looking a lot better because the stock's at 17 bucks. So, Mr. Rock Lobster, this is kind of like old school odd block paper, aggressive upside call buying in a small biotech. It's almost the kind of paper the odd block was designed for. What say you, sir? Yes, like 10 years ago when these little biotechs. Yes, biotech- before <laughs> anyone had ever heard of a meme stock, right? Exactly. That's the meme. The biotechs were the original meme stocks, even, even before. Uh, they uh, actually, I think the whole P, P Coast, all that, all those first market makers, I came in at the end of that wave in the late 80s, but, you know, Genentech and Biogen and Amgen and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I date myself as usual. So there were meme stocks before there was an internet. <laughs> yes, before you actually. No, and you never saw anything on any social media. It's just all of a sudden the stock, like, it, you know, it would gap all the way through all the offers and all the, all the, all the, all the trades on internet would be scooped. You're like, wow, what's the news? <laughs> oh, I guess they got drug approved. Um, uh-oh. <laughs> and then no dealers would pick up their phones because they didn't want to sell you any stock. So that was the old days in the Wild West. Um, now, it, again, vol up 20 points. Um, so, again, I would say they're waiting for a drug, some kind of announcement, something like that. Um I don't know enough about uh, this company or the drugs that they do produce, but, you know, that's a pretty – it has the whiff and the look of a newsletter type of purchase on the 18s. Um, it is interesting that the 18s are pretty much the exact same size as – someone's got this magic 7,000 number out there. Yes. And, and, they're, yes. and they're, still, they're still going. They're going back in for more of the 18s. Not quite as aggressive as it was, let's say, a few months ago when it was – uh, you know, the stock was pretty far out of the money, but now, yeah, they're, they're not taking these off. They're adding more, Mr. Rockwell. So that's interesting in and of itself. Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, definitely, a, an, 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 let's just call it, yeah, an interesting purchase uh, and aggressive given that it's not really an earning stock. It doesn't make money. So they just keep raising money by selling stock to pay for, you know, uh, the research and stuff they do. They do have some revenue and uh, apparently yeah, they got a little yeah they got a little and they got cash uh to kind of keep going so um again i don't uh it's one of those companies that all of a sudden they'll have news and they're going to have a product that they're going to sell so it does appear that uh but right now it does look like somebody's interested so you know we'll see how it goes but um i again from a a Oh, oh, fibro dysplasia and all this kind of, okay. So they've got some, an, okay. So they have, they do have antiviral drugs, which could be, you know, cause we're in this kind of antiviral, uh, <laughs> antiviral, uh, uh, post COVID or COVID pandemic interest level. So, uh, but anyway, it just looks like good old fashioned, uh, uh, paper buying pretty pretty good sized chunks because uh, the volumes were. Let's see here. I mean, I'm looking at volume. You know, it's not they're not it's not your average retail paper either. So you know, 897 trade on the Gemini 672 441. 
sweeping Arca, sweeping Philly, sweeping Gemini, sweeping SIBO, sweeping the box. So uh, anyway, so that kind of paper generally is more professional when they're just grabbing all the basic available volume. So either they're front running some news or front running something, but that's, that is the flavor of that. Now, I was wondering why they haven't taken off some of these uh, maize that they bought. But then I looked, they bought them for 205, and that's pretty much where they're trading right now. So the stock was here when they did it last time, actually. They got a little bit ahead of themselves with the first chunk. They kind of overpaid a bit, which <laughs> that was a lot, 205 for those. So they, they kind of scratch them right now. They're 195 at 210. They could probably get them off for somewhere around 2 bucks, 205. But obviously, they don't want to scratch. They want to make some money. And they're looking to maybe add a little bit of leverage, a little bit of fuel to the fire with the Aprils as well. Obviously, the April 18s for a quarter. <laughs> if I'm going to do anything out there, I like those a hell of a lot better than two bucks for the 17s in May. That's a lot of juice for this thing. Someone's obviously expecting some serious upside to be had here. You guys trade this one, listeners? Are you familiar with it? Like a lot of these cheapy biotechs, there's kind of a dearth of expirations and strikes. You don't have a ton. There's no weeklies, for example, out here. It's just the monthlies. I'm so so spoiled now by weeklies, Mr. Rocklops. I want them in everything I see even though I know I understand it's a huge messaging burden for, for the entire industry to do something like that. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting here. This, the fact that these are still open, obviously they need a little bit more of a pop, adding a little bit of fuel to the fire with these 18s. Let's see, where are these Aprils trading right now? The Aprils are trading 50 cents at 65, Mr. Rock Lobster. So by your earliest metric there, that first print of 2,500 at 25 cents, looking pretty good, Mr. Rock Lobster. Can't get those anymore. Yeah, you like you like the you like the same dayers, right? When uh, you you buy them for twenty five cents, and on the same day, uh, you're like, oh wow, you know, uh, you're right, you could you're up some money. So, uh, and that's the reason why I use that. You're like, okay, I'm I'm buying some calls, and the first day I buy them, the stock tanks. <laughs> that's never, you know, buying short term options, it's never great when the first day you buy them and things just kind of melt. So, not a not a super good thing. Well, thanks for the suggestion, Ron, as well. This is definitely one we're going to add to our to-be-watched category. We'll come back to these. We'll come back to the Aprils pretty soon, I have a feeling. I got that early print. Whoever offered those at a quarter is probably regretting those now. The latter prints, 35, 40-odd cents and above, or probably more realistic what was going on. That's why sometimes uh, some of the scariest words you could hear as a market maker. How are they now? You just sold 2,500 for 25 cents, and now they're 20 cent bid coming out in your face. (laughs) That's never a good feeling. That's when you say, maybe I, I stepped in front of something here. And this guy looks like he stepped in front of 7,000 contracts. So intriguing stuff. We'll keep an eye on these. I got a feeling these Aprils are going to work out because they already are. The maze, that might be a bit of a bridge too far. That's, that needs a nice pop. Again, I'm not that familiar with this name. I need to dig into a little bit more. Maybe they have some uh, announcements on the horizon that could merit that. But that's a lot of juice for those 17s. As witnessed by the fact they've had a nice little run in the stock, they still can't dump them. They can only scratch them. So uh, intriguing stuff. That's what happens when you pay through the nose for upside listeners. Uh, You need an aggressive commensurate move to make that make sense. We'll keep an eye on those. Let's keep on rolling. This has got to be the kind of crazy size trade of the day, Mr. Rock Lops. Let's go out to Kinross Gold Corp, ticker symbol KGC. This is a Canadian gold and silver mining company headquartered in Toronto. Trading right now, six bucks, pretty much exactly up two and a half percent or about 15 cents today. On the year, they've had an interesting topsy-turvy year, which, again, kind of follows the trajectory we've seen for the precious metals themselves. A year ago, it was a little bit more than a buck north. It was 717. It rallied up to, looks like it's high for the year of 834. That was on May 18th, so not quite on our June 8th day, listeners. And then it kind of fell off a cliff on June 11th, went from about 8 bucks to June, let's see, June, a week later, June 18th, it was 642. And then it kind of sold off again down to five. Actually, it looks like yeah, about 524 in September. Rallied again as gold did up to about seven bucks again in November. Then sold off hard. Looks like it hit its 52-week low there of 490 on December 15th. Bounced around. Got back down to that same level again in February, of February 28th. And has been rallying ever since, which again is kind of following the trajectory of all the precious metals that have been rallying since the February 24th invasion. And Mr. Rock Lobster, what we saw was just... I think the technical term is a whole lot of paper. <laughs> In particular, the first print that caught our eye was 19,500 of the SEP 8 calls going up for 17 cents on the bid. And then we looked and said, yeah, there's probably more to this. So we sent the Ive Sauron back and it found that there indeed were 
There were 19,500 as well of the SEP6 calls for 60 cents. So it's like doing that vertical 19,500 and 19,500 times for 43 cents. Looks like paper buying that 6 8 vertical. But they weren't done. Then we saw around the same time, about a minute later, and all these prints went up late. So take the times with a bit of a grain of salt, listeners. We saw the five puts going up for 28 cents. So buying that vertical for 43 cents, selling the SEP five puts, it seems like 35,851 times. That's a lot of puts for 28 cents. So you're doing that roughly on a two to one ratio there. Uh, so you're do it, taking off most of what you just paid for that call spread. So that call spread pretty much a bit of a free call spread with those puts. And that wasn't enough. They also came in and dumped another 25,000 of the eight calls for 17 cents. So I have to add up all the ratios here. I got a feeling they got a pretty decent credit for all this. Uh, but yeah, so it looks like they sold about 45,000 of the eight calls, bought about 20,000 of the six calls, and then sold about 40,000 of the five puts. So it's a 6-8 ratio call spread with five puts financing it. So pretty tight, all things considered. This looks like someone coming in here, Mr. Rockloft, you're saying they're probably sitting on some KCG stock, hence the ratio to the calls. That's what we usually see in like a stock repair type trade. You got a little bit more to go to the upside. And the stock has bounced around. It's still pretty low, six bucks compared to where it was. So they could get a little bit of room to run. If it gets back up to eight bucks, which is not that far from the 52 week high, they don't mind letting some of their stock go. And if it gets back down to five bucks, they don't mind picking up some more. Is that pretty much what your takeaway is as well from this massive smorgasbord of KCG, or excuse me, KGC paper, sir? Uh, key, so, so it looks like they did a zillion contracts and they, their goal was to not have any debit whatsoever. Is that, is I, th that think, I think they, away? I think they got a credit for this. I'd have to, I'll have to add it all up. I mean, the puts were 28 cents by themselves. The vertical one-to-one -one is 43 cents. So you're only talking 15 cents. And then they came in and dumped another 25,000 of the eight calls for 17 cents. So I'd be surprised if they didn't get a credit. Yeah. So you're, you know, you, you need a slide rule and, uh. In an abacus. You do. Let me get my abacus to out. <laughs> to figure out if it's. Yeah, do you remember when they, were, they used to do like uh, the commercial conversions, and then you'd have to work out the ratios for the options yep. to create the exact debit account? Then you had to you call know? Cincy to meet the stock on Cincy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's bullish, right? It's not overly bullish. They're Again, and I, that it's like, uh, you know, you think of what just uh, Mike just said about, okay, you know, it's I'm not overly aggressive right now. I'm selling put spreads. Well, I think people think that the commodity prices are going to be pretty stable. You know, it's hard, it's hard to have the, you know, global demand just going down. I think they're going to do well, but they don't have that same kind of go go feel, like when the Russians are like, ah, we're just going to cut off everybody's commodities or whatever. So, you don't, they don't. This trade doesn't have that feel. It's more of okay, we're going to try to work into this, spend as little money as possible and see what we get out of it. And that's, you know, it's bullish. I just say it's not go-go bullish the way it's set up. No, because they're getting the hell out of Dodge at the H strike. And I can't imagine they'll be too mad about this. Is this one of your names? Are you like a lot of mining names? Is KGC on your list, Mr. Rock Lobster? It, it is not one that I normally follow, no. Well, there you go. Maybe you need to pick up some, uh, some six calls and join the party, sir. Seems like a fun time out here. <laughs> Maybe you need to do 60, 80,000 contracts. Why not? Let's do it. Let's, we'll do it together on Oddities tomorrow. What do you think? Oh, well, you know, we could. Uh, I'll, look, well, you know what? There's also 2,000 of the April 8th, eight, uh, the April 8th six calls traded. Oh, there uh, you, go. you know, they're only seven cents over parity, but they expire tomorrow. But there was some <laughs> there. There's also action on the April 14th six calls. So there oh. is some. There we go. You know, and uh, gold is making a little bit of a move here. So uh, who, you know, who knows? Maybe who we'll knows? make some brokers happy tomorrow. We shall see it out there. Uh, let's see. Looking like, speaking of oddities, looks like our buddy Unlimited in the chat. He's still trying to work those Oatly 
four puts in June for 50 cents. Still can't get them. He's been trying them for like a month now, right? <laughs> the stock's in the toilet. He still can't sell those things. I guess that 50 cent level was a bit of a bridge too far. I also look really quickly. We're kind of running up against it. We went on on some of these names. Uh, Aries Capital. We talked about them before. Ticker symbol ARCC. Trading 21 bucks even right now. Uh, this year, the high for the year, 23. Low of the year, 18 and a quarter. I just wanted you to keep an eye on this one, listeners. We profiled a pretty sizable, looks like put buy out here this morning. It was the May 20 puts, so about a buck out of the money. These went up for 35 cents, lifting the offer. This is a 27 and a half vol. Uh, So someone perhaps looking for a wee bit of downside. There are earnings in this cycle. The next announcement is on April 26. So it seems like someone, probably a shareholder, maybe a little bit concerned about the prospects for earnings, buying themselves a little bit of the old insurance out there. So we'll keep an eye on those. Meanwhile, it's time to keep on rolling. It is time. For the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, everybody. Welcome to the mail block. Let's get into it right now. Not a lot of time left. We've been asking you a pretty fun question of the week. It seems like it's been pretty contentious. We're asking you the launch of SVIX. Last week has rekindled that debate over whether these products should even exist. If you listened to our double pro Palooza yesterday, uh, we had Dan on, we had Brian on yesterday, both of them weighing in in the negative camp saying these products should never return to our trading screens. So we asked you guys that. I said, should they exist? Yes, they serve a purpose. Or no, they are too dangerous. Uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, we asked you this on Monday. I'm curious. If your thoughts have evolved on the world of inverse volatility, are you still firmly in the uh, no camp, sir? Uh, They're a great product for uh, people like Andrew and Mark to exploit. That's kind of how it looks to me. So, I mean, if if I personally would want to be bullish or bearish on the VIX and uh, I'm, I mean, if I'm bearish on the VIX, then, you know, you go for the predictably crappy products, but uh, I'm of the school of thought that, um, they're, they're great for people at the option pit to exploit. So I'll put you, I guess, in the yes camp then. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, I have a feeling I know where you fall. Yes or no, sir, for these for SVIX? Oh, I, I you know, I, li- I like them. Um, right now they're suffering from some liquidity problems, so I haven't traded them at all. But I'll wait to see how they go. I'm never in a, I'm never in a rush to try a brand new uh, Vol product. I like to see. <laughs> why, why would you possibly be hesitant to adopt a brand new <laughs> Frank and Vol product, sir? I, I have no idea what in the past could have happened that would make you hesitant. I don't understand. Exactly. <laughs> um, like so, um, you know, I, 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 it's just odd. I'm using VIX more and more, and I'm starting to look at the spikes. So it's like, okay, well, I know that those futures will settle into those options, and you know, and there's cash, and there will be a less. So it's it's sad because those those products are very fun, but you know I like anything buyer beware, um, and and the option markets are just kind of crazy still wide. So it's they're picking up, but I am in no rush to jump into those. See, pay attention, listeners. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Just because it's listed doesn't mean you have to trade it right away. You can wait a little bit. Uh, right now, our audience firmly in the yes camp, eighty and a half percent saying yes, 19.5% saying no. Got about a day left. It's going to go out right around ball views tomorrow, listeners. So if you haven't played yet, add options is the place to go. Uh, that leads right into this question from Chukag. We kind of just answered this. Chukag says, have you guys been trading up SVIX yet? Any thoughts? You just heard from the Rock Lobster. He hasn't touched it yet. I have not touched it yet either. So maybe factor that into your consideration. Maybe you wait a little bit for these products to get a little bit of traction behind them before you dive right in, especially with the Vol Franken products, these things as we've seen, can have all sorts of issues beyond just what's going on in the vol market. They have issues with their construction, fund flows that could cripple or destroy them. So, yeah, take your time. <laughs> if it's a good product, it'll be around for a while. If not, you'll probably be happy you didn't dive in. I do want to get those folks on vol views one of these days soon, too, so we can pick their brains about why they brought this back, what the deal is, how they're going to avoid being another XIV. I mean, just think about it, listeners. Imagine being inherently short VIX all the time. <laughs> There's some challenges posed by that. So, 
Yeah, think about that. Interesting stuff. Let's go out to this one really quickly as well before we get to the round the block. Let's go to Mtez. Mtez says, how do I get the live streams? Thanks. We cut this so often. Like, you guys don't listen. I love you all. But people freak out. We tweet out the links to the live streams, and then people can't access them on Twitter, and they say, how do I get these? All right, one more time. I say it at the top of every show. <laughs> if you want to access the live streams for this show, for every other show that we do here on the network, including Twifo coming up a little bit later today in about half an hour, as well as everything else we do throughout the week, as well as additional bonus, super duper extra fun content. We gave you two of them this week. We gave you two pro Q&As with the Viceroy and Greg from Genesis Vol on the crypto front. If you want options, oddities tomorrow, you want to hear Andrew and I talk about how we throw good money after bad all the time, even though it's been pretty profitable for the most part there on options oddities. I tease us, but we have fun there. As well as participate in all the giveaways and get the live, theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club is the place to go. That will tell you exactly what you have to do. You sign up there, then you'll get a code emailed to you. You can access and link for our live server. You can go there, check out the shows there. You'll also get the access for our pro podcast feed, which will get you all those shows I just mentioned on demand, as well as everything we've done on the pro side since we started this whole thing, which is a whole bunch of stuff. So trust me, you have a lot of content waiting for you. Theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club for MTES and everyone else who keeps asking, how do you get the live streams? Meanwhile, it's time for us to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, Uncle Mike, go. What you got on the radar for Around the Block, sir? Looking at earnings coming up. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, Also looking to see if we can make a run or see. Looking quite honestly at the 4,500 mark on the SPX, watching that. And then uh, beware of the inverted yield curve. It could be coming. Speaking of inversion, we have ticked green now in several of the major indices today. So this could be one of these days where we see a reversal, listeners. Looking like it right now out there. Mr. Rock Lobster, same question for you, sir. What is on your radar until we meet again on Monday? Well, I have uh, – so the Fed's the Fed has spoken, right? Wow, the Q's just had a huge bounce. Yeah. What the hell happened? They're, they're loving it. They're loving it. I guess all the hawkishness from yesterday is gone. Uh. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man who spoke yesterday. Of course, of course. Um, so you look at this, and you're like, eh, um, interesting. Again, I'm looking at commodities, oil prices, uh, alternative energies, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, gold is having a little bit of a bounce today. Um, so, and uh, yeah, and I'm looking at VIX going into the 20 handle by tomorrow. At this rate, because if the market ain't going up and it ain't going down, hard for VIX to stay where it is. Um, and, you know, and I just say a prayer that this stupid Ukraine war is over and people stop dying. There you go. So that's not it's not very exciting. Um, and I actually Ford is starting to get uh, interesting to me again because uh, it, it is suffering from all of these short term supply issues. So usually it's kind of a. Feels like a little bit of a buying opportunity. Uh oh, I was thinking that. I was thinking we may have some oddities fun for Ford as well, Mister Rock Lobster. Uh oh, we're all the same. That's why that show is so dangerous. It gets expensive. I know. For us. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure, Oatly, why not? Edu, why not? Hood, why not? Actually, my hood, one by two, looking all right. We'll get to that tomorrow yeah, yeah. there uh, as well. Yeah, See, all you gotta do is pay the three cents, Mister Rock. That's all you gotta do. Maybe it was even two cents. I don't know. You and your credits. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted, though, now, because now the 10 puts are 60 cents again. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Just do that. <laughs> there we go. Well, oh. happens they have dry powder. You get some you get a little itchy. Pitch we'll trigger. get to all that tomorrow. We got to get on out of here. Now, listen, before we go, around the horn we go. Mr. Uncle Mike, if folks want to check you out on your legion of online platforms, where should they go? What should they do? Let's start off with YouTube. Just put out a video a couple days ago on married puts. Check me out on YouTube, St. Charles Wealth Management. Type in the search box. Feel free to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, at Mike Tosaw, T-O-S-A-W. If you are looking for a financial advisor who uses the option strategies, feel free to reach or to check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. 
And listeners, may I just say, I know I am the sexiest man in options, crowned and anointed. But if you want a little bit of raw sex appeal in your YouTube, St. Charles Wealth on YouTube, I mean, those, those married put videos, that's some pretty sexy stuff right there. Come at me, compliance, if you dare. All right. And speaking of sexy, Mr. Rock Lobster, if folks want the sexy in the land of the pit, where should they go? What should they do? So there goes Tucson giving away all the. I'm gonna I'm gonna start putting up free YouTube videos. Take that. We're gonna have a free YouTube video off right there. Um, go to optionfit.com forward uh, memberships and uh, you can check out capital gains and all the cool stuff. My trading legion and uh, having a great year in 2022. Uh, doing much better than the market is. Um, just learn learn how to trade options. Uh, learn how to put those put on trades. Understand how vol works to help you structure an option trade. So you can do all that at optionpit.com, 888-TRADE-01. You can say, tell Ted that you heard this show and you get 10% off and say that Andrew is the best looking man in options. There you go. <laughs> Once again, you want him to lie there. I said, you know, you got to go to the, to the anointed sexiest man in options here. Uh, there is some raw magnetism going on in the Uncle Mike YouTube channel. I'm not going to lie. That, that married puts gets pretty sultry. Listeners, and of course, if you got any energy left over, call Ted. Tell him you know who the real sexiest man in options is. He'll give you the 10%. That's going to do it for us today. Of course, coming back here in a little bit for Twifo, and then back again tomorrow, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern for Ball Views. And then, of course, after that, for all you secret club cool kids with options oddities, will we get into some of this forward badness? Tune in tomorrow to find out. Then back again on Monday, another episode of the Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.